Sanders, who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome to the Wow Report. Oh. I am Tom Campbell, Chief Creative Officer at World of Wonder. I am here as I am here every week with the fabulous club kid turned best selling Arthur James St. James. Oh my God. And the, uh, the, the the editor of the Wow Report. Yes, uh huh. The, the, the all, catalyst for everything. Is wow. Best. Yes. Sure. And you know, <laughs> not here this week, sadly, is Fenton Bailey, our fearless leader. He's in New York making money so we can work out of this window. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But. Filling his chair, filling his place, is the newest member of the Wow family, the newest cast member, our of, newest Wow celebrity, our million dollar listing LA, Tracy Tudor Maltus. A Wow celebrity. A Wow celebrity. Really celebrity. exciting. Yes, and I want you to know, we told you as you we, as you walked in that we have been practicing saying your name all day long because it's a bit of a tongue twister. Tracy Tudor oh, Maltus. Tracy Tudor Maltus. I mean, you kind of nailed it. <laughs> Tracy Tudor Maltus. Tracy Tudor Maltus. Say it loud, <laughs> and there's music playing. So it's soft, and it's almost like. <laughs> Tracy Tudor Maltes. It's yeah. gorgeous, and I've got to say, you are so beautiful. Thank oh my gosh. You. We've never had anybody I, so chic on the show. I barely brushed my hair today, so <laughs> I appreciate that. And you know how you know Tracy is new to the Wow family? Uh-huh. Because when we called her and said, Come on the Wow Report, she said yes. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Yeah, right now. Uh, we'll check in later. <laughs> you know what? With, without further ado, each week we get together and we count down the top 10 things that make us go, Wow. wow. And uh, without Without further ado, let's start at number 10. Number 10. Yes. And it's Million Dollar Listing LA. Season what a 10. coincidence. And we're here talking to Tracy Tudor Baltus. I joked. It's, it's super exciting. <laughs> it's so exciting to have you here. You are, now we are on radio, on Radio Andy. We also are on YouTube. So the YouTube people already know this, but for those of you who have yet to watch Million Dollar Listing, you're idiots because Tracy is gorgeous. Tune in. Bitches, so come gorgeous. On. Well, no, but not only are you gorgeous and fabulous and chic and everything, and you've got a perfect life and a fabulous husband that we're all in love with. <laughs> I'm sure you and are. Children are. that we think you bought at a store somewhere because they're so cute. You haven't seen them off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a bit of a ball buster on the show. You are a strong woman. I am a little bit of a ball buster, but that's because these guys' egos are so freaking big. Someone had to tap them on the head and just kind of squat them down a little bit. <laughs> Josh Altman is your friend foil this Ugh. season a bit and we all roll our eyes a little right i mean god love him he tries he's but hot. he's hot kind really i mean I he's, like, he's like a, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just move down the line and see who you wouldn't yeah, do right <laughs> i know but as they walk past one at a time <laughs> no josh is like a brother so it's very easy to poke fun at him i think you know the viewers might not know that but we've been friends for a long time so it's it's fun to give him a little bit of shit I mean, the man has an ego the size of California, <laughs> so I like to like you know stick a pin in it every once in a while. I've only seen the first two episodes, but it's clear that you guys like poke each other, but you end up okay. Totally. I I mean, come on. Well, it's a family. It it always becomes a family. Absolutely. Now, how long have you worked at the company with I've him? I've been I've been at Douglas Elliman for a little over three years now. I believe. Okay. Yes. And tell me about how they approached you to do the show, and uh, did you well, have no. any hesitation? <laughs> tell the on air version. I don't know really what happened behind the scenes. No. This <laughs> this is actually this is absolutely true. I was I was on the season season 9 yes. with Josh. He I, he I had shown one of his properties on London Dairy and it was a house that was featured on the show and so I I walked a client through it and it ended up being an offer situation. So we went back and forth on season 9 and we had shot a couple scenes together and after that he was like, "You know, you'd be really great on the show." and mentioned it to one of the producers and well, and I then heard the that conversations editing, began. They were editing the scene. They're like, who's that girl? Stop that phone. Who's that girl? Give it was like Tracy Cecil Tudor Maltes. It was like Cecil some... B. DeMille saying, she's a star. Now, I just uh... want to break the ice literally and figuratively because what I learned a lot, I did a lot of research on you. Yes. And it was from the first oh, episode, Rosé all day. Oh, thank God. And we are I pre-taping a little late in the day, so we're, we're it's almost 5 o'clock yeah. here in Los Angeles. <laughs> and if I can figure out how to open this, we're going to enjoy. But where would you, are you, would from, you like me to do that? Oh, yeah, I will do it. We'll do it. Where are you from originally? I grew 
up in Hidden Hills, which is in the San Fernando Valley. So I'm a valley girl. girl. I am. I mean, you can take the valley. I can tell, and I love that about you. No, that's a compliment. You can take out of the valley, but, you know. So I grew up in Hidden Hills and then went to USC for undergrad, and I never left. I wanted to go to New York and, and study theater some more, but I ended up... There you go. Mm-hmm. Keep rosé all day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I drink, so I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch it and, and enjoy it. It'll do the trick. <laughs> there you go. I ain't no connoisseur. Thank you, and cheers. Cheers to your healthy dog. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, cheers. Mmm. <laughs> I'll take it. Has, um... It's only about a couple episodes that have yeah. aired. Are you? Are people starting to recognize well, you? Is that happening? Oh my God! I had my fir- first paparazzi situation, really? which I'm fairly certain she had no idea who I was. But then <laughs> someone else had said, "Is that you know Tracy?" And I was like, "This is so embarrassing." I I, I didn't know what, what to do. I wasn't wearing? expecting it. I was totally in like jeans and a leather jacket oh, and like tennis shoes. That'll like, low teach key. you. That'll teach you. Apparently you can't do that anymore. Like, no, no, you. 7-Eleven run. Yeah. You gotta be. You gotta Can be you lend her one of your capes or ponchos or something? I do. So she's I always need like a go. fabulous cape and big sunglasses <laughs> just, just, just all the a time. A pashmina and oversized glasses, <laughs> right. and that's all you and need. And then you're always fabulous, mm-hmm. right? This sounds crazy, but do you have some kind of style philosophy? Because the outfits I've seen you wear so far are fantastic. Oh my god! My, one beautiful. of my one of my closest friends, Lauren Matoka, is my stylist for the show because. I work and I have to sell real estate and I certainly can't wear like the same five suits that the guys are wearing all day long. (laughs) So she's helped me for, for certain events or certain, you know, like a special listing appointment or something. If I really want to knock it out of the park, she'll get me a great pair of heels or a handbag or just something to spruce it up a little bit. Well, is it a coincidence that you sometimes match the house that you're in? Does she, (laughs) does she go in? (laughs) Because I was noticing (laughs) a little color wheel. I (laughs) I swear to God, I think, you know, she's a big fan of blush. And I'm like, the my entire wardrobe is now, like, white and blush and, like, camel. I, I my, The whole wardrobe. She's thrown out everything that, you know, apparently is too colorful, stripey, oh, or cannot right. be worn on camera, which I learned very quickly. Yes. They love color on camera. Yes. yes. Well, I don't have any colors. <laughs> you, look, you look stunning. I, say, I know, I'm all black. I have uh, nothing but nothing but black. I'm, I'm, and like, that's not all the what neutrals, wants. they don't yes. want it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, now that we've plied you with cheap rosé all God. day, uh, won't you stay as we count down the rest of the countdown I would love here? to. But we want everyone, please, please meet Tracy on television on Million Dollar Listing LA, which is every Thursday, Thursday, every Thursday. at 9 p.m. And it really Bravo. does. It, it changes the vibe so much. It's really so nice to have a little female energy in yeah. the show. You and know? I will tell you, I was so prepared for the Twitter haters and, you know, all that kind of st- nonsense because the guys warned me. They're like, don't read right. the stuff. And right. I, I have to tell you, most of the women that are following me on Instagram now and reaching out to me, they're all badasses mm-hmm. and they're super kind and supportive. Yeah. So I've been lucky. Not to say that there haven't been a few, but, you know, for the most part, I love the way the females yes. are coming out to support us because the truth is, like there should be a female on the show, and and yeah. up I, I until think, now there I, I hasn't think been. You bring in a whole new audience too. I think it's nice. I yeah. think it's really great. Thank so keep you. watching Million Dollar Listings every uh, Thursday at nine. Uh, James, what do we have at number nine? Number nine. Number nine, I watched a documentary on Netflix. I'm, uh, James, uh, I have no have, life. James, all I do is watch Netflix. Yes, I think he okay. gets his Netflix for free because free, he's always promoted. I'm kind of with you. It's called Franca Chaos and Creation. Okay. okay. Sounds upbeat. Sounds like <laughs> Saturday night. I'm a yeah. little bit old. It's Franca Chaos and Creation is how, is, is, is how you're supposed okay, to say it. Okay, okay. It's um, about Franca Cezani, who, is the, who was for many decades the editor in chief of Italian Vogue. Okay. Oh. Okay. Fabulous. And she's sort of the Anna Winter of Italy. Uh, but whereas Anna uh, sort of came in in the 80s and reinvented Vogue and gave it this enormous uh, commercial success, Franca came in and gave it this artistic success. And she brought in like Stephen Meisel and Helmut Newton and David LaChapelle and a lot of boundary pushing people. And she did a lot of. Uh, really controversial things that really elevated what we think of fashion photography. And, it, you know, before it was like women in dresses on the beach jump 
jumping up, and that was you know that that was it. And she did these famous f- photos that I know you would recognize if you watch it, uh, where after the BP oil spill, she took women in feather dresses and covered them in oil, put had them dead lying on the beach covered in in oil and everything like that. She did one um, where there is a t- famous TSA, like they're going through the line at the TSA, and they're all in you know famous frocks and you know jewels like and everything. Runway and at the TSA. Felt up, and there's a famous like uh, plastic surgery one with Linda Evangelista, and she's in a wheelchair, and she's just had like her. She's had black eyes. Yeah, yeah. She's had facelift. She's is really that the one that Kylie Jenner was supposedly. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so. But she she copied it. Yeah, she copied it and was in the wheelchair, and I guess Gaga did too for the paparazzi video. Yeah, well, I think Gaga was doing a Helmut Newton thing that he did with uh, Nadja Orman in the nineties. Anyway, um, <laughs> that, that, that was a lot. But anyway, so she's it's her son is doing this documentary, okay? And her son is just gorgeous. I mean, and she's just fabulous, right? Try to and find a guy he doesn't find as gorgeous, but keep no, going. But she's in the back of limousines for most of it, and he's interviewing her <sighs> in a series of ever more glittering gowns, right? Like, she just keeps getting more and more fabulous as it goes on. And she's talking about, you know, what is art and art versus commerce and what is the role of an, of, of an editor and does, can politics be a part of, you know, fashion and all this stuff. And it, she's just very brittle and fabulous and she's just you, just you have to watch it you have to you really have to see it <laughs> but at one point the son says to her this is like one of the, my favorite takeaways he says you know you're not a genius but you find geniuses you have an eye for for discovering genius right? and she looks at her son and she says who the fuck told you I'm not a genius? If <laughs> I recognize genius, I am a genius. Yeah. Yeah. A genius of recognizing genius. Absolutely. And Makes sense she, to me. Un- unfortunately, spoiler alert, she dies. She goes oh. to the doctor and discovers. Mid documentary? No, well, they, they <laughs> In did. In the back of a limo while wearing a <laughs> silver beaded gown. <laughs> no, what but she way. discovered. <laughs> it, this is, it happened in 2016. She went to the doctor, found out stage four cancer. She's just this legendary legend in the fashion world, and she died. And so the son. Quickly, it's Sounds like. It, it was. It was very fast. And that the son had been me. doing this. Horrible. And so he put this together as a love letter to his mother and her mother's his mother's intellect and an eye for fashion. And if even if you just watch it for the images from Italian Vogue that are so famous and you know them when you see right. them, yeah. it's really just a fascinating documentary. And I think everyone should check it out. Absolutely. Franca. Would you chaos and creation. That? that was pretty good. I was actually, pretty I would watch it. That was very convincing. Is, is she, you know, is it was Anna Wintour at the funerals? I mean, is that really? I, I don't know. That, that's not really covered in <laughs> Their relationship would be interesting, I'd right? I'd like to know what's happening between because them. Because I know Anna and the French Vogue woman, Corrine Roy. Don't get yeah, along. Yeah, they don't. But I, I think Franca is, she's, she has like a really maternal energy about her, even though she's so chic, you know. But um, I, I, I can't imagine anyone not liking this woman. Uh, she's just fascinating. Ooh, that's very cool. Well, I'm doing a terrible job because that's the name of the documentary again. Is Franca, Chaos and Creation. And it's streaming on Netflix. It's streaming on Netflix. All right. So we're now at the point of our countdown where it's number eight. Number eight. Yeah. yeah? It's me. Um, what am I talking about? Oh, oh, oh. The movie on everyone's lips. Have you heard about Lady Bird? I, I saw the preview for it. I'm dying to see it. Have you heard about Lady Bird? I heard it's the best movie of the year. I'm here <laughs> to speak truth to power. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to frame this because I went to it because everyone's I don't even know what it's about I just went I thought I it was did, about Lady Bird Johnson well I was hoping it was about but Lady Bird not, Johnson okay. because she did such a good job making the highway so beautiful <laughs> um, but it, it is it's Greta Gerwig wrote the actress yeah. wrote and directed this very personal film kind of about her um, and this is what I'm going to say I, I didn't love it okay. but I think by me saying I still want you to go see it I think by me telling you it's not the best movie ever you're going to really enjoy it but I went expecting to see the best movie in I've the 21st Oscar century buzz. yeah and it's such Who's a pedi- the mom in it again La- Lori Metcalf oh, oh, I love well, her I love Lori Metcalf well that's what, when I started to do <laughs> my notes how, do you, how can you hate a movie with Lori Metcalf you love her I, I, when I started doing my notes it's it's it's, it's star studded, you know, because um, Greta Gerwig is is uh, girlfriends with Noah Baumbach, who is a you know a, a director, fabulous director, does okay, all these incredible yeah. films. Um, Tracy Letts plays the father. He's in divorce, and he got the Pulitzer Prize for the August Osage County oh, play. Right, sure, okay. yeah, I remember so, that. So I didn't like his movie. And um, who am I? And Lucas Hedges, who was in Manchester by the Sea, I'm the Sun. I'm not being bowled over which by any of these he, names. Yeah, but I'm not like blown away by that either. This but wait, very, which one was he in Manchester by the Sea? He was the Sun. Oh, he was the cutie. He was the cutie. Uh, 
cheeky oh. little redhead. And he, yeah. really he plays, and the star is Saoirse, it's really hard to say her name because it's spelled funny, Ronan, and she was oh, yeah. the lead in Brooklyn. She, she was, was the Irish also in, in Brooklyn. I didn't see Brooklyn. Remember, she's, she's she was in like she, three Oscar nominated films. She was the bratty little girl in Atonement who, who, who started the lie that ruined yes. everyone's okay. lives. Okay, yes. yeah. Uh-huh. And, she, and she is amazing because I didn't know it was her until I after the film. Like I didn't know there was the same actress who was in Brooklyn because she's such an oh, amazing actress. I love actress. Brooklyn, though. <gasps> I did, but too. But I love those totally character-driven films. And you, even yes. by watching the preview and the long, the more extended version of it, the mom, Laurie Metcalf, I'm yes. sure she or... Is Laurie going to be... No, can Laurie be nominated for an Oscar, please? She should. She won okay. the Tony last year. Um, she's so so she might be an EGOT by the time yes. she finishes. And she's a nurse and she drives a bad Toyota. It's set in the year 20... 20, 2002, 22. that's how you say it. 2002, <laughs> it. which when you think about that, which is scary to me, that was 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yikes. it's kind of like watching American Graffiti in the 70s. Oh, Do you know right. what I'm saying? Like uh-huh. that much time has gone by? Yeah, that's and weird. And you think like, well, that's just 2002. That's not... And yet it was a different time. And it's coming of age. It's this girl's senior year going into her first year in college. And uh, I won't, I don't want to, I'm, I, I spoiled too much last time, but it's set in Sacramento and she goes to a, uh, oh good, I need to wrap up. She gets, she's going to a Catholic school and it seems like it's very much, you know, Greta's story. But I, I guess my public service here is to say, go see it, but go with lower expectations. See, and it'll me, be fantastic. It Looks like a Sofia Coppola movie type thing, yes, it like does. sort of like a virgin suicide. That's sort of mm-hmm. the dreamy quality yes. that I got, and I love that. There was yeah. I didn't I, every it was impeccably acted. It uh, touched on all these themes in a really beautiful way, and the characters drew you in. But I didn't feel like any of it was really real. And how stupid is that? It didn't connect to me, and yet obviously it's written by and directed by the woman who lived the life. So I'm wrong, but I think no one will say. Out loud, they didn't like Lady Bird because you have to like Lady Bird right now. Okay. Yeah, it's it's the it's the All big right. film. All I right. will watch it, and I, All right. if you watch it, tweet tweet <laughs> us and uh, let us know. Um, what we like <laughs> to do before the we get took a little quick break, but before we go away, uh, question. Yes. Pop question. Pop we quiz. ask the question, hold your answer until after the commercial break. Okay. And this is uh, regarding Million Dollar Listing LA. Don't know if you've uh, watched it all. Nope. But who of the existing current cast was part? of seasons one cast. It's just one individual. Who is that individual? Think about it, and we'll answer that question when we come back and keep coming down to the top 10 things that make us go wow on the Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. All right, welcome back to the Wow Report here on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. It's Tom Campbell here with James St. James and our very, 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 very special guest, Tracy Tudor Maltis from Million Dollar Listing LA. Yay! Yay. Yes! <laughs> uh, Liberty. Uh, speaking of Million Dollar Listing LA, which is back on the air Thursdays at 9 o'clock on Bravo, plug, plug, plug. Uh, we had a little uh, pop quiz before the commercial break. Question is who on the current cast of Million Dollar LA, Million Dollar Listing LA, not you because you're new, was on the very very first season of Million Dollar Listing LA. Well, ding, 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 ding. I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's got to be either Josh or Madison. I'm going to say Josh. I think it's Madison. Josh Flagg. Madison. Madison is correct. Yay! Yay! Okay. Isn't that what, and the Million Dollar Listing LA first season was so different. Well, I had such like a crush on. Guys and, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was Chad Rogers. I love Chad. Yes. Remember the hair? I totally well, he was am season still friends with Chad. Two, I was think. he too? Season one, Randy and Fenton came up with this idea before Bravo was Bravo. This was this show is really that old. They came up with this the idea of like sort of how crazy it is to go up like um, house hunting on a Sunday and all the crazy realtors and people you run into. Oh, because they were probably house hunting at the time. Yes. And it was really eccentric, <laughs> eccentric people. Yeah. And and one of the people on the casting tape when, when Bravo finally approved it had died. That's J- Trenton's joke that it took so long for them to pick it up one of the people on the thing. <laughs> That's hysterical. That's hysterical. Sorry. No, but funny she was a at fam- all. I wish I could remember her name if Fenton were here. But she was this really famous uh, female realtor in LA and was, she was, she was, she's up there in years. But anyway. So um, keep plugging away. James, what do we have at number seven? Number seven. Number seven. <laughs> well, I'm taking you back to Riverdale. No, your favorite show. My favorite show of all time. I'm I dying think. to get into that show. It is so good. I did it last year when it first premiered. We talked a little bit about it. Um, but just this a refresher. Season, it's the Archies well, reimagined. 
yeah, it's it's basically it's it's Isn't Archie it like, and what, Jughead what? and Betty and Veronica and Reggie and everyone that you remember when you were a child. Yep. But it's been thrown into a blender, and now it's Pretty Little Liars meet uh, Twin Peaks. Okay. Okay. It's, they're in this weird sort of uh, town that feels retro, but it's not, and they're all in fabulous fashion. I thought it was like a Gossip Girl moment. Well, I was. It, it is because they're they're all fabulous, and they're all these hot teens having sex, and but they're involved in murder and blackmail of and course they triangles are. and <laughs> all Great this stuff. Great for my kids. <laughs> and, Sit down with your daughter. But it's all it's all bathed in this like blue and pink neon light. Okay, so it's sort of like I call it bubblegum noir. Is 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 what it is. In this season on it, there's a gay character named Kevin Did Keller. Did it just premiere? No, it was it was last season. Okay, and but this it's back season, on the air. Now. It's back on the air. And there's a serial killer, and he's um he's obsessed with Betty. And but there but there's a gay character named Kevin Keller who's in the comic books. He's debuted about ten years ago, and on the show now, the gay character of Kevin um doesn't like Grinder. He's a teenager, and he thinks that people on Grinder are fake. So he goes and hooks up in the woods every night. He goes and cruises in the woods like gay men have been doing for a hundred years. <laughs> hundred years. And, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we can we can open up in front of you. Trey. I didn't know and, where you were on this. <laughs> but like he just and he says that I like to go. I want to know who I'm going to hook up with. I go into and I have sex in the bushes. And you see him go jogging every night with his shirt off into the woods where this serial killer is. And Betty is furious with him. She says it's disgusting. It's horrible. Blah blah blah. But it's fascinating that it's it's we are now 2017 where this is network TV prime time and we have teenager who doesn't who's on grinder and then he's hooking up in bushes and it just feels really like subversive like if I was a teenager in the 80s when I was growing up and I saw that it would have just blown my mind but don't you think kids know about that they're already they're obsessed with it Do I mean they? god 10 years ago maybe not but now I mean like even 5 years ago social media wasn't that crazy but like I've got a bunch of friends that have 13 14 and 15 year olds and they are how I was at like 18 that's now, so crazy Crazy. I mean, granted, they're trying everything earlier, like they're totally sexualized, uh, you know, I mean, the, the you know, tops off, posting pictures, yes. guys sending, you know, you know what pics. I mean, at 13. It, the, would you, when you were in high school, when you were in high school, would you have been one of those people? Would you have gotten it? Would well, you... we'll never know because uh, have we had access right. to it. I was popular in high school, but, so. Uh, doesn't probably. everyone, like everyone's parents says that well, the same thing? You like, know, because yeah. in, in the 60s, it was, you know, the hippies and free love and the yeah. parents were freaked out. And then in the 70s, I mean, like every decade, there's something for parents to be I freaked out. But like, when did you try like alcohol for the first time? Well, when I was 15, I was sneaking into clubs, so right? I, I knew what I was Weren't doing. Were we all? I know he's such an innocent. He's like, oh, he's like, <laughs> can you he's, imagine? He's climbing down the trellis of his bedroom and biking to gay bars. I did. I would ride. I would ride my bike down the highway <laughs> and to get to the gay bar. Um, but it just I, the idea of like just I don't know, just on TV. It's so weird. I don't know. I just, it's not weird for them anymore, though, because it's just what they're used to and like I mean come on you get on Instagram and you can find whatever you want so <laughs> have I mean, you had to have your daughters are very young how old are they they're 11 and 9 when so do you start I having the talk they you... don't even have a phone yet, but oh. they, they already use their devices like their iPod touches or their laptops to like text their friends. And so, I mean, the it's, older it's one is come. probably getting one for Christmas. That's what they it's, learn on the playground, the playground. Right? And then it's about like, when do you give them the Snapchat? Because the Snapchat is the scariest oh, one because yeah, the Snapchat they, goes away. Uh -huh, yes. And they can do whatever they want. Right. No one will ever know. Mom will never find out. Unless, I think unless too much you have a mom like me. <laughs> and I think too much information is not too much, but then again, I have cats, not children, so <laughs> take my parenting <laughs> advice very, very, very carefully. Anyway, well, the other big takeaway about Riverdale, okay. and this is a different subject, is that Cole Sprouse, one of the Sprouse twins, I don't know if you remember, the, um, Ross's twin kids on Friends, Yes, they were like two years old, oh, he's yeah. now right. 25. Zach and Cody. Yeah, and Zach and Cody's Sweet Life, a show oh, on right, Nickelodeon. Right, right. Uh, he's now 25, and he is the star of the show. He steals every scene. He's so hot. He plays Jughead, and he is just... Jughead's hot. No, Jughead is freaking hot. hot. And if you, he is the reason to watch the show. I'm sorry, we have to wrap it up. I'm, and on that note, good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good night, everyone. Kept uh, me hanging on a thing. <laughs> so Riverdale, Wednesday nights at... 8 p.m. Oh, thank God. I thought it was going to compete. You watch Riverdale, then you flip over to Bravo to watch uh, Million Dollar List. Yeah, no, it's Thursday. Yeah. yeah. There, oh.
I'm not, you know, this is a lot of responsibility. We have a guest I'm hosting. It's very, it's a lot for me. (laughs) Number six. Tracy? Okay. What do we have at number six? So number six is, come on, the interview with J-Law and Kim Kardashian, which I cannot say enough. That was, Uh. I mean, even my husband, who will not watch reality television, including probably our show. (laughs) (laughs) He's definitely not be watching this, so let's talk about it. Yeah, no, definitely, we're good. (laughs) Um, I I mean, it killed me. She... I know there's like, who's sexier? Let's have that conversation first because Kim looks better than she has ever looked. Kim is, you know, and you don't even have to be a Kim Kardashian fan to look at her and just say, she looks amazing with that blonde hair. I mean, for the love, she mm. is. And just the context is that Jimmy Kimmel was away and Jennifer Lawrence was stepping stepping in in to host for Jimmy. And and sat down with Kim Kardashian. And the backstory is, is that when Jennifer Lawrence was filming Mother, it was so intense, she said, that she had a Kim Kardashian room that right. she would escape to to watch the Kardashians <laughs> yes. to, 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 like, to like decompress. To like decompress. Yes. I, heard, yes. I don't know if she talks about I, that I, on, the, on the... I heard about that. Uh-huh. But like, it, it, first of all, J- J-Law needs her own show because that was bananas. She is as funny as Kimmel and just completely, I mean, she's a bit crass, right? Yes, like, good. Super sexy. I mean, blonde hair is like, banging up, boobs are out. I mean, she looks amazing, but she's, you know, Kim's very reserved and very sort of pulled together and, you know, in my opinion, a little bit guarded. I, she's Kim Kardashian, of course she's going to be, but J-Law is like out to lunch. She just, whatever flies out of her mouth, flies out of her mouth. And I found it totally refreshing. I think she is like the hottest thing going. I think maybe that Kim was maybe a little intimidated. Well, of, why wouldn't she be? Academy Award yes. winning. Yeah. But I thought Kim handled herself brilliantly. Oh my God. Well, she just doesn't even have to do it. She just looks so hot. But she should she, just sit there. Again, once again, underestimated, not by you, but by others. Because, and Adam, young Adam said, you have to watch this because he's a huge Kardashian fan too. And she kind of, avoids every question but doesn't make you know it like you know she kind of steers the questions Kim yeah like the question about Black China where she was like (laughs) what's going on with Black China and she was like well you know I think about the the kids what dream is the child's name yes I think about dream and I just think you know dream's gonna see this one day and you know what I mean that's so thoughtful because what would have come out of my mouth is that she ruined my brother's life she totally ruined my brother's life but she has first of all on the one hand she has Kanye schooling her on how to you know how to deal with the press oh yeah because Kanye mother, so yeah he's well, impressive <laughs> well okay 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 <laughs> maybe it's all her mother who is who has taught her no, but, but she knows what she's doing she's she's really good she's very good she was really good but I I mean I was really surprised that Jennifer Lawrence was able to pull that interview off without skipping a beat and was funny and like handled everything on the fly and the jokes were super good I mean there could be like a female Jimmy Kimmel on the way I was gonna say know. you know it could be when you know in 10 years she could just have her own show i do remember that when kim was um subbing for um uh, you no know, in the morning um uh, kelly uh, kelly yeah oh. she sat next to kelly she said and and people were saying that maybe when kelly retires they were going to give it to kim and kim was saying that she wanted a morning show do you think kim has it in her to do that I mean, she's she definitely knows how to be in front of a camera and she's, you know, she's sophisticated and, you know, she's I think she's past that, you know, 20. I mean, she's been doing this for so long mm. and survived. She she's knows- been humiliated in front of the nation and she can still face the cameras. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She's been through it. I think when it comes to Kardashians, nothing's Kim possible. Nothing is Kim possible. <laughs> oh. That was very good. Thank you. So <laughs> what do we have at number five? Number five. That's me. Um. I went to Largo at the Coronet. You know where that is? No. no. The Coronet Theater's on La Cienega. It used to be Cafe Largo. Now they have these events. Right there, it's sort of near the Beverly Center, which is a whole other topic for another time. The Beverly Center remodel is going horribly. Um, and it was Judd Apatow and Adam Sandler, who used to be roommates, okay. who came Judd together Apatow. and they were raising money for the National Compassion Fund, mm-hmm. which was raising money for the victims of the Vegas shooting. Which, well, the only side note to that, it's a fantastic cause. They raised $40,000 of the people in the room. It's like, by the time you're 
you're there, it's like, was there a shooting in Las Vegas? Like, so many horrible things have happened in the past month that it's hard to even remember that, you know, by the time you get, like, a benefit together, like, it's hard to remember it happened. Anyway, they came together. It was an exciting night, um, and it raised questions for me, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. But you know how comedians have a shelf life? Like, they're the funniest thing forever. Like, I remember watching Bob Hope growing up and wondering, why is he funny? Why, uh, <laughs> like, why is he on my like, TV every holiday? What's I going Don on? Don Rickles was that yes, way for me. Yes. I never got it. But then you sort of see as you educate yourself when you see old movies or that you realize that they were like cutting edge in their time. And so then, what you're saying is Adam Sandler has passed I'm, his shelf I'm, life? I have not said that, but that's uh, a hot, sexy tease. I like it. Keep listening. <laughs> the, um, and the other person for me, Billy Crystal, who again, ran, oh, but, but he was the He's funniest just, thing on the, t- on the Academy Awards all through the 80s 90s, right? He's still funny, though, I think. He is, uh, he's, still, I he's a I little, don't. I don't know, there's something, Ben Stiller is on the verge yeah. of, of becoming, I'm, I'm not putting these guys down because they, because they, they, it only means I'm getting old, too, right. by the way, especially those guys. But, you know, a lot of people are negative about Adam Sandler. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of, there was some article I looked at later that's like, he's aged out as a material, he's not edgy, he needs new friends, he hates press. Is he even trying? I'll tell you, though, something, I am Punch Drunk Love is, I, I don't, there, there's a, there's like two or three movies that he's done that are actually redeemed him in my eyes and let me know that there's a depth there and that there's yes. something there that might be worthwhile. And it's from Manchester, New Hampshire, which is only an hour from where I grew up in New Hampshire, so I like that. But he came out, and it was kind of... I guess he tours and does stuff every now and then, but I hadn't seen him forever. And he looks pretty good. He's married. He seems really happy. He says, I won't talk to the press. He and Judd, in between sets, they did a double set, which was kind of great. It's kind of like celebrities interviewing themselves. You feel like you're kind of there with them in an uncomfortable seat at the Cornette Theater. And... <laughs> And and he sang. His his big thing is to make all those silly songs. Oh right, about pooping and airplanes. Yeah, <laughs> did he did he do that again? We're totally, still there. Okay. He did a lot of that. And at some point, I just have to tell you because the seats were uncomfortable. He was the second act, the closing act. It, it seemed like he was so happy to be there and so happy to be trying out material and using all material that it seemed like it was never going to end. Oh, yes. And I was scared. I was like, you know, your brain starts to panic. Like, we're never going to leave. I, I don't, <laughs> you know, I'm going to ask him. Look, what's not going to happen? <laughs> um, but he's still funny. He's still vital. He's doing um, a series on Netflix now, right? He's doing the, uh, a family drama. Oh, or... the Markowitz. Thank you. Oh, yeah, with uh, Ben Stiller and yes. Dustin Hoffman. So and, when you're... Yeah. Uh, in your net, next Netflix uh, well, search, be cool. take okay. a look. But you know, I love Judd Apatow. I was going to say what he's he so do? handsome. Judd Apatow is a sort of behind the scenes. He directed, <laughs> brought, he, he directed he or produced or wrote like the Forty Year Old Virgin. Oh, he's amazing. Bridesmaids. Yeah. And he's this nice guy. He's on Twitter. I love him. His political point of view. Adam Sandler is not on Twitter. Will not do Twitter. Just like it sort of has that's refused smart. to to sort of. That's part of it. Like Adam has refused to sort of go the way of the young kids. And you know what? It's a choice. I'm like. Well, by the way, he's you still married, Twitter. right? You stay on Twitter. He's married. <laughs> he has two daughters he adores. He talks yeah. about. Wait, David, I mean, Judd Apatow is married to Leslie Mann, right? Yes. Uh, was she there? She's my face. She, I think she was, but they were, they, they were, she didn't come on stage. Oh, because she's, uh, to talk about chic I mean, and lovely and, and die wonderful. for her. She's so and, funny. And I don't know why I'm doing this because I'm not going to have the, 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 the timing, but he talked about everything and about the Hart, the Hart Weinstein thing. He says, what's so weird about it is how many people are masturbating in Hollywood. He goes, for him, the best thing about masturbating is that nobody's there to see you to judge you. I thought it was kind of interesting. It's like, you do it on your own. You know, you look great. All right, I'm losing everyone. Um, we have another break to take, thank God. Uh, and I, it's an Adam Sandler question. All right. Wait, can I tell you my Adam Sandler connection? Sure. Um, that when I was in college at NYU, Tisch School of the Arts, uh, my dropper. best friend was named Andrew, and I would go hang out in his dorm room every day, and we would hang out with his his dorm mate. And it, I ran into Andrew 25 years later, and he said, you realize that the guy that we were hanging out with was uh, Adam, Adam, Sandler. Adam Sandler. And so I know Adam Sandler very well, but I never realized I knew he him. He stole your act. <laughs> that whole Happy Madison thing. That was you. It's me. <laughs> well, this is an Adam Sandler question. Question: What was his his first Hollywood role? Was on what 1980s hit sitcom? Adam Sandler, first Hollywood role. All right, think about that. We're gonna take a little break. We'll be right back on the Wow Report. You're listening to uh, Radio Andy, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Welcome back to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. We are in the midst of counting down the top 10 things that make us go, wow. Uh, and right before the break, little uh, question about Adam Sandler, who was hilarious the other night. Um, 
His first Hollywood role, his first showbiz role, was in what hit 1980s sitcom? Tracy, I'm giving it this to you to. The hit, the, 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 I mean, it's a hit. What, are the, what are the big, big sitcoms? Nice Growing guess. Pains. Growing Pains. The answer is Blake. Cosby Show. Uh, what? And what did he play? He was Smitty, one of uh, Theo's friends. Okay, uh, okay. He was on several episodes, like four or five, I think. Huh. Well, you, you learn, learn something new. <laughs> something you don't need. It's, it's the kind of chatter you wouldn't bring up at a cocktail party. You'd just be like, nah, not going to mention well, I know that. Why not what, yeah, what I'm going to be talking about tonight when I go out? <laughs> All right, James St. James, and, and you bring it up here. What do you have at number four? Number four. Uh, I can't elevate the conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry. I went to go see Bad Moms Christmas. Um, <laughs> had you seen Bad Moms? I did. I did. I went to the first Bad Moms. I mean, I loved the first Bad did, Moms. Okay. Uh, the thing is, I, it's got a great cast. Mila Kunis, Kristen Bell, uh, um, uh, Catherine Hahn, right? Oh my God, she's the best. She is so funny, yes. And then they had the moms. Well, and the, Yeah, they were the bad moms in the first one, and now their bad moms come to this one for Christmas. Uh-huh. And the bad moms are Susan Sarandon, who plays like a, a body biker chick from the 70s, mm-hmm. uh, which is a role she can play in her sleep, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, Cheryl Hines comes on, and she plays a perky, mother-obsessed, smothery, mothery type character. And then Christine Baranski, okay, comes on in the role she was born to play, a brittle wasp (laughs) who (laughs) is demanding in a Martha Stewart sort of way. Uh. And she's in her little St. John knits and her Chanel and her, you know, she's just fabulous with the helmet hairdo and everything oh, yeah. and I could just watch that in my sleep I, I mean I'm so it makes me so happy to watch Christine Baranski that the rest of the movie can be as bad as it wants to be it's basically I don't know if you remember the first one yeah. it's a lot of montages there's a lot of like they're running through the supermarket and set to some sort of you know my friend Greg saw it and said there's a lot of slow-mo like walking in the mall <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, they get drunk in the mall and then, then it's sort of like fast motion and they're grinding on Santa Claus and they're stealing a Christmas tree yeah, like and, the whole preview right <laughs> exactly if Is you saw the, the preview you know the, <laughs> That's movie. the movie um okay. uh, there's a scene um where uh, blah, blah, blah. there's a scene where christine baranski makes them all go uh, caroling and she dresses them all up as scrooge and she hires a choir to be back up for them and they go door to door and she at one point she grabs the microphone and she just starts going off on her own and that's like christine baranski just like she you know she wrote it into the script or she had her yeah, like yeah, you yeah. know manager say it um at one point um Justin Hartley from This Is Us. No one has ever written this many notes about I, Bad Moms I know, Christmas too. You are a, a, a scholar. No, but, but Hot Men's of the Week right here. We oh, always oh, we, oh, we do oh, our Hot Men's of the Week. And it's Justin Hartley from This Is Us. He was also on Passions and Smallville. He's, is he the cute brother from This Is Us? Yeah, the blonde. Yeah. The cute blonde, you, you little perky, yeah, yeah. post-twink twunk. Uh-huh. Uh, and he he's a stripper Santa. And he comes Aww. into the spa where um, Catherine Hahn works and he needs to get his taint waxed. And so there's a whole scene where he's just naked on the on the thing with his legs in the air, oh. and it, that's, that's worth the price of admission right there. You don't see that in the trailer. <laughs> I'm no, going, you I'm don't. Gonna, I'm I missed that part. <laughs> I'm going to shell out 18 bucks to see that. <laughs> yes. Taint going to miss that. But it's 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 just, it's cotton candy movie, you know. It's People like, are enjoying it. Yeah, I mean, it's I don't have to see another Christmas movie. I don't have to see that one with Mel Gibson. And, no, you no, don't. No, no, yeah. So I feel like I've gotten my quote out of the way. Right. And um, I enjoyed it. You, you got know, your shopping done early. Yeah, Christine Peransky, uh, <laughs> Cheryl Hines, Mila Kunis, like what's not to love, right? Yes. No, I agree. I, I'm like a huge fan of Christine Baranski. Yes. So like anything that she does, I'm, go- I'm going to go see it. Even the Grinch who stole Christmas, remember, was <laughs> it she went too? Yes. Uh-huh. That's that so. nose. What did you like about the first Bad Moms? Maybe it was just they make me feel better about myself. <laughs> right? That's okay. Uh, that's mean, a real legitimate truth. answer. Yeah, I mean, they're just funny. I mean, I love the, the, the relationship between the three of them. The craziest one, what was her name? Uh, Catherine Hahn. I mean, yes. I just, and she, she's so inappropriate uh, yes. like, to the next. Like, there's inappropriate and there's crossing the line. And then there's she's gone to the other side of the field. So I, and We she, all have friends. We have the one friend who's inappropriate wherever you go. Like, you, you can't. You know. <laughs> and then you have the one friend that's always a little prissy you know it's, it's yeah. that sex in the city you know yeah. dynamic and then there's james <laughs> and then there's me the guy in the cave <laughs> um last question who did you see bad moms with your husband your like your girlfriend oh, by yourself no. or your mom I, I think i saw it on an airplane 
I did. Oh, I saw sense. it on an airplane on my way. I mean, what else are you going to do? Sense, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, it, it, it's, um, is it good? Uh, you, it's okay. You don't have to go pay to go see it. Wait until it's on TBS and it's going to be, you know, showing a hundred times every Christmas season. I'm and, sure. Yo, it's a good movie on Sunday morning just to, you know. We won't be seeing it at the Oscars. No. no we won't no. be taking my kids to it. <laughs> All right. Tracy, what do we have at number three? Number three. My wow number three is The Handmaid's Tale. I don't know if you guys have binge watched it yet, but I did recently, and I just cannot. I, I'm, obs- I'm obsessed. Yeah, I have not done it. Um, I, <gasps> I, I, I need to. I, I read the book in the '80s, I guess, right. when it came out, and I remember thinking it had a very. It was sort of about the time. It was very timely for then, but it, it's even more timely now in Trump's America. And I watched the Absolutely. first one a long time ago and got a little spooked off it. But I need to go back. Tell us. Your Wait, obsession. let's start here. Correct me. Was there another? <gasps> Whoa, we just knocked Whoa. over some rosé all day. <laughs> she Any notes are gone. We're playing. We're <laughs> Flying by the seat of our pants now. Anything can happen so now. Um, so, was there another season? Because there was a rumor that after I saw the first this season with Elizabeth Moss, yes, that there was actually one before it. I don't think no. so. Okay, there is one coming out. Season two has been yeah, announced. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's going. It's coming out in 2018, like in the spring of 18. But anyway, back to the story. I'm. I can't get enough. Like, I could watch it again. And my husband was into it for maybe the first two episodes. The and then it stuff. just gets, yeah. <laughs> it's dark. It's very dark. And then it just gets so dark that you're like, oh, my God. I mean, it's 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 deep. But, I mean, I don't want to give it up. I don't want to give the, the last episode up. But there is, there is a scene where... There's a shift, and it is the most cool thing I have seen on television is in a long time. Is it fair to say, and I have not seen it, that the inmates take over the prison? Is that a fair kind of twist? I mean, on some level, I think there's a realization in this their post-apocalyptic sort of totalitarian yes. neighborhood yep. uh, that, that the shift the shift happens, and they sort of realize without them, they're these people can't exist. They have power. They have power. And then all of a sudden, the, you know, the red cloaks and everything are like, you know. There is a lot of uh, hand, Hands Made's Tales uh, parodies I, going oh, on. Oh, I can only yeah. imagine the what amount of Halloween costumes Halloween this year. Halloween. But do you remember in the <laughs> summertime, <laughs> they, they sent out a hundred women dressed uh, to walk around Los Angeles in the handmade outfit? Oh, really? I were, never saw as that. As a publicity stunt. As a publicity stunt. And people were Instagramming because they'd be sitting at bus stops and they would be, you know, like like walking across Wilshire in like formation. My and friend like, Greg works at the Mondrian Hotel and this is all like, you know, white, white, white. And he sh- he did some video of the, the women, women just walking silently. Yeah. Through. Now, you know, because there are a lot of shows that I watch that like like Walking Dead where after every episode I need to get on Twitter, I need to call someone and just like talk it out because Rock it's, and cry it's, it's, and This I, is one of those shows. Like you you literally are so disturbed. Yeah. For most of the episode and it's so it's it's so tough to watch particularly being a female. And where we are today, it's mm. like god. This now, is, this could be right around the corner. Yeah. I, you know. Do you have someone that you call immediately afterwards, and and uh, do you have people watching it with She's you? She's married. She has children. She has a life. She, she, <laughs> no, she this is after across everybody. the kitchen and be like, look, <laughs> this is after everybody goes to bed, and I'm laying oh. in bed, and it's eleven o'clock at night, and, then you and just I'm lie like, in bed looking at the ceiling. I just I binge watch it until mm. one o'clock in the morning. It's terrible. Mm. I when I was watching America Horror Story, I was binging it for a while. I would have to watch a Mary Tyler Moore show at, afterwards just to cleanse myself for bed because it was so scary. I do. Sign Seinfeld. Yeah. I, I, I do I do American Dad or Bob's Burgers. Um, <laughs> does the disturbing. ending which I need to see, does it does it say a season two is coming? Did you feel like it, it was I definitely felt a season two is coming, but then I started panicking because there was everybody was getting so excited about it and obviously it did incredibly well at the Emmys and won so much stuff. Hey guys. Hey. Um, <laughs> 
that I that I I was like it, it's got to come back, and I did yeah. my research and realized that they announced that it's coming back in in eighteen. Yes. So well, wait, do we, at the last Emmys because I've already forgotten the Emmys and I've forgotten uh, award season. Yeah. Did um uh Elizabeth she Moss won. win? She, she won, did. and she was she swore, and it, people said that was a that's something that Scientologists are told to do to like to be curse. relatable. Is she curse. Scientologist? Yeah. Yes. Oh, for that's another a show. Shame. For another show. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and Alexis Bledel is in it, who's um, she's, Rory Gilmore. She's amazing. And then the girl, the, the the lady that plays the old, the older nun. What is her name? She won Best Supporting oh, Actress. Yes, she did, and I can't she think of her is, name. Is she an Irish she, actress or something? Oh, shit, I can't remember her name. But I will. I but she was so wonderful because she's so nasty in it <laughs> that you can't fathom that in real life she could possibly be anything other than vile <laughs> and she know. got up on stage and she was like I'm just so thrilled <laughs> to that be was her you know <laughs> what's her name her name's Ann Dowd Ann Dowd oh, that's right. okay, there Ann we go. Dowd she was like my hero she was so cute <laughs> up on, that st- on the right. Emmy stage I, I just died I feel like it's coming I think I've heard it's coming in the spring of 2018 so yes. if you're like me or James and you haven't seen it we need to get up to speed well, guys, and watch the- Hands Made's Tale on Hulu. Well, I just because I don't have Am- oh I don't have Hulu, but I'm thinking that if I it's get a raise from Wow, I'll get Amazon and you Hulu. You gotta get it. Here's twenty dollars. <laughs> I mean, Kill buy yourself it. For Jesus. A month. I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to number two. <laughs> number two. Now, speaking of women who are recognizing their power. Yeah. This uh, article really struck my eye. New York strippers revolt. Hashtag NYC stripper strike. And it seems in the New York area, there's a new phenomenon where the bartenders who call themselves star tenders, dress like strippers. Oh, well, yeah. They become huge Instagram stars. And they get all the tips and the strippers don't get a tip. And... The strippers. This, you, this is you're speaking for women here. Yes. All of womankind in the in the working industries, and the strippers have to like pay the club something to dance there. They have to kick back or something, oh. and the bartenders get to keep all the tips. Mm. And in the layout of some of the newer clubs, I haven't been to a strip club in a thousand years. Is this the strip? stage is like in the middle and the bar goes around the stage so you can't so even get to the I'll, stripper yes, so if you want to give them and it's no raining on that stage and this one woman named Gazelle Marie who's who's a rosé soaked picture I'm going to hold up for our YouTube audience <laughs> sorry look at those hips she yeah. looks hot RuPaul's yeah drag fabulous race, kind of fabulous now is she a stripper or a star tender she is a stripper um, and because you know James back in the day was the uh, the king of of, of nightlife in oh, New York. I was to say the king of strippers. Yes. Well, <laughs> but uh, uh, so I thought it brings to your attention, and, and you said you read about this too. What do you guys think? Well, you know, I mean, in the gay clubs forever, the bartenders have been the stars. You know, I mean, like you can't go to a, a club in WeHo without just the, in a thong and these hot <laughs> beefy boys. So I do you imagine want to come for a drink with us anytime. Let us know. <laughs> but, but I imagine the strippers are always have always been jealous of bartenders right no because i think generally not that i've been but i think generally in the strip clubs the bartender at least in los angeles the bartenders are usually just serving the cocktails and they're pretty or whatever but they're not they're not doing god's work let's be honest okay they're not managing these men and you know all i can say is if the bartenders want to earn those tips they better get their butts up on that table and dance yes or, that's true or, yeah. but here's the problem they're also bringing they're bringing in the clientele so because of internet so these star tenders go on the internet and they take nasty pictures and then they get a following and then right. they draw people to the, to the but stage but I do think it's a design flaw of the club because the classic strip you know strip club they have a, 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 a you know the major proscenium design or proscenium agreed and the a, pole, colon- a colonial strip yeah. club uh, but, you know, well, it's theater in the round, and you can, you know, get you can have access towards to give them their tips and everything. To yeah. put them far away, enough away that they can't get their tips is doing a disservice a to the strippers. Strippers, to the strippers for sure. But also the 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 star tenders, they could, you know, they could give them a kickback. And the problem is yes. these managers of yes. these clubs, you know, if they're probably bringing in men. the people, yes, probably men should be 
kicking them back. You know, if they're bringing in 30 people, 50 people, 150 people, they should be kicking them back 10, 15 percent of the door fees because, you know, they're all paying to get in the door. And it's it's a bit like waitresses, you know, who pool their tips at the end of the night. Maybe everybody needs to pool all their tips at the end of the night and divide it up. The only um, strip club I went to like two, maybe three straight strip clubs in my life. You know, I'm not straight. And one was in Boston off Route 1 called the Golden Banana. And the women were just like they had like unusual parts. They weren't like all beautiful. It was like, you know, Sally's got really huge nipples. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay. And um, they all had bullet holes. And then and... once I was going to a wedding with a, another gay friend, but we were in San Antonio, Texas. We met there and we were driving a long ways to the wedding. It was a really fancy wedding. And we thought, let's just get somebody to eat. And we ended up going to a strip bar in Texas, near the airport. I bet strip bars in Texas are sort I of fun. I bet those girls are hot. Oh yeah. my God, it was so different. <laughs> and they had a bunch of tables, like it was like a card playing thing, but it, every table had a girl, a beautiful, <laughs> voluptuous, yes. clean, Big girl hair. next door, yes. beautiful. And what I love about like gay bars um, or women like at Chippendales, they're all like, wah! And men were just like, <laughs> They're just quiet. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I was just like, woo. I'm not I, part yeah. of this. Anyway, the, with the, with the um, hashtag NYC stripper strike, check it out on on internets. And the, the sad thing part is, despite their proposed action, none of the strippers have actually stopped working because they can't afford to. Mm. Mwah, mwah. Are they unionized? Are, are do strippers unionized? You need to go to New York and, and take that under your right? ears. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Um, we are, are just one away. This is a commercial break away from uh, telling us the number one thing that made us go, wow, wow this week. Uh, and our resistor of the week. Take that $20 and get yourself some Hulu. Uh, we'll be right back. You'll listen to the Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hey, we're back. You're listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. I'm here, as always, with James St. James. How do you do? So happy you're here. Blake, our millennial producer, has been here the whole show. I have. Hi, guys. Introduce you. (laughs) That's okay. And Tracy Tudor Maltis from Million Dollar Listing LA Season 10. Hey, hey. Is here, and she's been such a great sport. I think we're going to get rid of Fenton and just have you every week. (laughs) I think they're going to get rid of me. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We do miss Fenton and hurry back. Um, But we're here. We're at that moment where we're going to talk about the number one thing that made us go wow number one it's a little self-serving but it's it's worth it the Trixie and Katya show I have been waiting for this forever and ever and ever okay guys I haven't seen it I, I mean I know that they're the two drag queens but I have not seen this one oh, so you're gonna well, have to leave impossible me in. to explain <laughs> I, I don't even know how we would begin here's the back here's the behind the scenes Trixie and Katya are both contestants from RuPaul's Drag Race okay season seven, seven. and season seven is supposedly the worst season of RuPaul's Drag Race ever everyone hates all the queens I don't no, I it's loved not true. It. I it's not loved true. it. Yeah. And um, Katya uh, was got to like not the top, like almost, and then people thought she was robbed. And Trixie got kicked off twice. She like got kicked off, came back, got kicked off again. Well, and, that's and, tough. And they didn't really know each other before the show. They started hanging out together. And then we have the Wow Presents, which is this show is on the YouTube channel that we have here at World of Wonder. And somebody, I'll give credit to everybody upstairs, said, "Why don't we put Katya and Trixie together?" And they were like, "All right. Well, what are they going to call the show?" And they go. They want to call it uh, UNH, H, 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 H. And they were like, it's our show and we get to talk about what we want to talk about. So between them just talking about what they wanted to talk what? about. Is that really the name of the show? It was uh, on The Wild Presents. Uh, this, yeah. is the, this is the long story. <laughs> and, they, and, and then our editors, whose names I totally Ron, forget. Ron is, is just one of the dearest people on the planet. And Chris. Ron and Chris. And Chris yeah. oh, shout out. Uh-huh. They just took their heads. They, they cause it, it, Green screen. And okay. Like, because as, as a rule, editors are kind of like, uh, and God bless them, they have their own world going on inside right. their head. And you're sure. forced to follow like there's a million dollar listing. Look, right. and, and we to told them way. to do whatever they want with it and just go bananas. And you're seeing the the editor's creativity. These, these sort of nerdy little boys just yes. going bananas on a show, putting putting everything bell and whistle they can. Turkeys and it's just so the editing is as funny as Trixie and Katya. Yeah, and Trixie Trixie especially has sort of moved the needle on what drag yes. is. She's brought in sort of an artistic element to it, and sort of a cartoony element that wasn't there. And she's 
really crazy and over the top. And Katya has a real surreal sense of humor. Katya's she's, insane. She's, she's like in, legally insane. Like she shouldn't yeah. be given a gun. No, I like and her. I, I don't the know why. The two of them together just meld and they play off each other so beautifully. And watching the show is like being on crack or acid so or something. It's now called the Trixie and Katya show. And it's going to be on TV on Viceland. So it, it premieres this Wednesday, November 15th. At some time, check your local listing. But, but um, yeah, on top of that, to, to help promote it, yes. we've been allowed to show the first episode on Wild Presents. Right. Oh, it's, that's cool. You can watch it right now. So you yeah. can go home and watch it after you've, you know, you've put the kids to bed. Yeah. I had a glass of rose. Yes. You know he's take, not taking a tab of acid. And can I just say, <laughs> shout out to Viceland, because I met with uh, Nomi from Viceland at this thing called Real Screen, which is this TV convention. I call it the squat and pitch, because for three days, networks and producers meet, and you just pitch like every half hour. Wow. It's annoying. And Nomi mm-hmm. came to me. I didn't know her, but she's my kindred sister now. And she's like, listen, I need a late night show. I need a show about talking to any, any, any characters, any people out of the box. And I'm like, do I have the show for you? <laughs> and it's called, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they went, uh, before, she got us a pilot. And then they were like, you know what? No pilot. We're going straight to series. So there's, wow. there's going to be a series of them. And we hope that the Wow Presents audience comes and finds it and goes. We hope that the Radio Andy audience, if they don't know, tries it out. And I'd, I'd love for you to check it out and I send us an email. I love that show. Well, you know, Viceland, though, is a perfect queen. space because Viceland does a lot of really interesting programs. Totally. I don't know if you've, if you've had a chance to check it out. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, I, I fall into it, and all of a sudden, it's like 12 hours later, and I'm somewhere in, you know, in a yurt in, uh, you know, the Kazakhstan. <laughs> totally. Like, you know, and you're like, wow. But, I didn't know prostitution was this bad. <laughs> but Trixie and Katya are part of, not, not a new brandy, but they all were like, you know, the world's really dire. Let's have stuff that's fun. So Trixie and Katya are on to have fun. And as much as they are men in wigs and whatnot, they do a segment called Brian and Brian. They're men on the street. And and they're like they have a bromance. They're like bros in drag talking about stuff. So you see, you see, you see them as bros too. You you do you do, and they're they're fun and they're filthy and, and they just break out stars. Oh they're, they're, they're just yes, have star quality totally all over them. Watch the it. Trixie and Kachi show on Viceland starting this Wednesday, November fifteenth, and every week after that. Um, it's time for the Resistor of the Week. Dun, 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 dun. We don't have a sound effect, so that's good. <laughs> um, um, you remember this picture? I don't. I don't know what this yep. is. You don't. And I'm on the internet all day long. I don't know how I missed this. What happened? This is. Where's my paper? This is Julie Briskman, and I love she her already. works in the. She works for the government, um, and uh, in a north in, in North Virginia, the the presidential uh, car car pool car oh, brigade. Know. Yes, Hashtag. was going by, and she she was on her bike and she flipped the bird to the president. Oh, hot! <laughs> and I love She's that. She's like, get and, out of my way. Yes, and this made a lot of headlines. She got fired. Oh no! No I know. way! She got fired. Can we hire her at Wow? First Amendment protects you from. She can do that and not be arrested, but her and she was and it's her back. So she was honest at work. They go, "Is that you?" And she said, "Yes." And they go, "We're sorry. We have to let you go." She worked oh. uh, at Akima, a government contracting firm. Oh well, government. So, um, Julie. Thank you. Yeah. You sum it up perfectly. I can't. I'm sure there's someone out there that's going to yes. hire her immediately. That's what I'm saying. But well, I want to say a, her name loud and proud. It's a bit like the Twitter guy who who on his last day of work deleted Donald Trump's you know tweet <laughs> Twitter that was account. A good one too. Yeah, that, that was a really good one. But you got to <laughs> think that somebody somewhere is thinking that's the guy for me, and somebody for somewhere sure. is thinking like I like this girl's moxie. Let's hire her. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, we've come to the end of our show. Oh. This is pretty good. And we just getting started. I <laughs> Tracy, thank you for taking time out of your busy, busy day. So Guys, this probably cost you like a hundred thousand dollars just to be here in commissions. <laughs> you you could have sold like two yeah. houses in the time it took for us to I, go I wouldn't this be list. here if it was. <laughs> <laughs> Good and honest. But please uh, watch Tracy and all of the fabulous uh, stars of Million Dollar Listing LA every Thursday at nine PM on Bravo. And um, I mentioned once again Tracy, the the Trixie and Tracy. The, Katya. Well, Trixie, Tracy, and Katya is the new show that we're pitching. To, would you be on the show? Totally be on we're that show. <laughs> the, the Trixie and Katya show. <laughs> on stage. Oh yeah, and one more thing: tickets for RuPaul's Drag Con LA 2018, which is going to be May 11th, 12th, and 13th. Three okay. whole days this at year at the LA Convention Center. Tickets are now available at RuPaul'sDragCon.com. We'd love for you to come. I would totally be there. We're going to change your life. Yeah. This is the, we're your new best friend. <laughs> um, We're going to make you a drag icon again. Yeah, uh-huh. I already have so many drag friends. Trust me. It's a pleasure to be here on Radio Andy Sirius XM. To, to those of you listening, those of you watching, uh, until the next time, let's go out and do something that makes the world go wow. wow. Bye. 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 Yeah.